Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to be talking a little bit about number lines today. And a number line is basically a line with numbers on it. Either that or a line with a bunch of points on it that represent numbers. This is what a number line looks like. All right, each number will be represented by a line on, or a, you know, a dash on this line. These ones don't line up perfectly for some reason, but basically, this is what a number line will look like. There will be some number lines where you represent part of a number, like each dash may represent a half of a point. But in this case, it's just all one dash here on the line, one mark on the line for each number. So looking at this number line here, what number is represented by the dot? You see that the dot is located right there. And that represents the point, or the number, negative 4. All right, so you can see that that dot represents negative 4. Let's put on two dots here. We have one dot representing negative 5, and one dot representing that represents 1. All right. So what we can do is take a look at this and say a couple of things about this. First off, we know that the difference, it's asking what the difference is between these dots, the difference would be the length between them. All right. The difference of this one is, you know, one, two, three, four, five. We could count them and go, well, there's six. The difference between one and negative five is six. Now, in mathematic terms, the difference means subtraction. So if we take one minus negative five, or in other words, one plus five, that's six. All right, so we can use a number line to represent that the difference between 1 and negative 5 is 6. All right? Or we can write it down in sort of a more mathematic way. But that's essentially what number lines, one of the purposes of number lines and what they're, they're good for. Another reason number lines are helpful, not only in illustrating the difference between numbers, but also in illustrating which number is greater. And sometimes it's challenging when you have a number, like, for example, negative 4 and 0. Let's write this down here. If we're just asked, which of these points is greater, negative 4 or 0? Sometimes that's confusing to people because 4 is bigger than 0. Right? But when you write it down and you put it on a number line, it becomes pretty obvious. You know, whichever point is farther to the right is greater. So 0 is greater than negative 4. And so we would represent this um, negative 4 is less than 0 right, with our less than symbol. Let's say we pick two other points. Um, let's say negative 8 and negative 2. This type of question confuses a lot of people um, because you'll have something like this. It's just written down on you know, which, you know, negative 2 and negative 8, what symbol would we put in there? Which of these two is greater, negative 8 or negative 2? Well, if we write it out on the number line and we look which point is farther to the right, negative 2. Negative 2 is farther to the right. Therefore, negative 2 is greater than negative 8. All right? So that means that we would put our symbol like this negative 2 is greater than negative 8. And sometimes the idea of a smaller negative number being greater than a larger negative number is a little bit confusing. But using a number line, we can represent all of that information, show it here, and, and be able to look at it, you know, have a nice visual of what we're actually asking here. All right. Now, we've used a couple of these symbols. And what are these symbols and what do they mean? Let's quickly talk about them. Um, this symbol here, the first symbol I listed is the less than symbol. All right, so we had something listed before. We said 0, well, we didn't use this exact one, but 0 is less than 4. That's the way we would read that from left to right. 0 is less than 4. The greater than would be similar. 4 is greater than 
zero. See, that's our greater than symbol, so we would read it from left to right. Four is greater than zero. And then if two numbers are equal, like um, negative six is equal to negative six, we can read that in two ways. We can either say negative six equals negative six, or we can say negative six is negative six. Sometimes we say is as a way to represent the equal sign. All right. But those are the, th the three basic symbols that we'll be using to compare terms. All right, these are our comparison symbols. And some different ways to remember them. Some people like to think of it like a fish, right? Like, um, or an alligator or something with its mouth open wide, like, you know, I don't, I'm not by any stretch of the imagination um, an artist. But here's like a fish. Right? on it and some eyes. All right. You see how the mouth is open, and the mouth wants to open towards a larger object. You may have heard this before. That's one way people remember it. So similar with um, with these symbols, whichever way it's opening, that will be the larger of the two numbers. So you have a 4 over here and a 0 over here. Some people also say it points to the 0, to the smaller number. Or you can just look at it like this edge here is larger than that one. So the larger edge goes to the larger number. There's a lot of different ways to remember this. But basically, just remembering these symbols is going to be very helpful And when we work with inequalities. That's what we call this. Whenever it's not equal, if it is equal, it's called an equation. If it's not equal, it's called an inequality. So if it's a less than or a greater than, we'll call it an inequality. All right. So there is just some helpful points on comparing numbers and how to use a number line to help compare numbers. Hope that that's been helpful for you and have a wonderful day.